The best time of year to go looking for flowers in these pastures is May and June. You want really your herbs to be flowering and it's easiest to identify these things when they are in flower. We're here today with David at St Dunstan's farm. He's got lovely neutral grassland, unimproved. We know the history of its management uh, for quite a long time and it's got all the species that we need to look at uh, in close, in detail, in, in one field. So we can go around and have a look at all these lovely herbs. We've got the knapweed and the oxeye daisy and all the different types of grasses to try and put a name to all these flowers that you might find in your pastures at home. This is a lovely meadow. It's quite typical of neutral grassland in the weald. And I think you've got to realise this is, this is a very good example. It's got lots of lovely flowers in. You can see the colours, the purple and the yellow. And it's also got a very good mix of grasses and lots of different types. Just at the beginning, you can see the taller white-headed grass. This is your Yorkshire fog. Um, when you go right down to the base, it should have um, nice pink and white lines that you can remember it's got its stripy pyjamas on. So that's Yorkshire fog. Um, as we go down, we've got the uh, typical species of neutral grassland, the common knapweed. A purple flower, lovely bristly top, almost like a teasel, with very bristly dark bracts below it. What you have to watch out for with this knapweed is as it grows and matures, its leaves will change. So at the base here, they're quite slender. And they also, at some point, can be quite divided. This is a typical species of neutral grassland and often seen on verges as well, the oxeye daisy. It's got a flower head roughly the size there of a 50 pence piece with a quite distinct yellow centre and a um, lovely white edge to it. It's uh, great even when it's not flowering. You can look right down at the base and it's got distinctive spoon-shaped leaves. We we'll also look for bird's foot trefoil, which is a little yellow clover type family over here. This sometimes has a lovely red tinge to it. This is bird's foot trefoil. You see a lower plant. It's a member of the pea family with a little yellow pea-shaped flower head here. And the leaves, three leaflets all together and two stipules right below it. It's called bird's foot trefoil. These actually become pods in black and they look like little wee birds, but um, it's a low growing plant. You can see if I put that here, the possibly 10 centimetres, it'll low and creep through the sward. Common herb on neutral grassland is common sorrel. As you can see here, it's at least a metre, metre in height. The seed head of common sorrel. An early flowering grass that has been and gone but it's a very nice one to catch when you're first out in March and April and it's flowering. This is a sweet vernal grass. And this is what gives the hay its lovely scented smell once it's made. It's got quite a vanilla scent when you get to it. And it has a nice little ligule where the leaf blade here joins the main sheath. There actually is a little beard around the edge there for that sweet vernal grass. Oh, another grass of um, quite distinct one, easy to learn at the beginning, is the crested dog's tail. It's got a very pale green spikelet here, so sometimes can be difficult to see in a, in a very dense sward, but it's distinctive. All the spikelets sit on one side of the stem. Another plant fairly low in the sward is yellow rattle. It's got a distinctive little yellow flower at the top there. And as the seeds become ripe, they form these pods. And it used to be called hay rattle by farmers, because when these pods rattled, it was time to make the hay. It's got a roughly a rough edge stem, squarish and opposite leaves. It's, it's a member of the Scrofularia family. This is a buttercup, as many people will recognise. Um, nice yellow petals at the top. It's got little sepals just below there that are pointing upwards. Distinctive um, lobed leaves that get quite divided further up the stem and on the meadow buttercup there's no little ridges at the base of the flower stalk here. On creeping buttercup there is and uh, to look closely at these you might want to use a lens and pick them up quite cheaply there are times 10 or a times 20 and you can even turn your binoculars upside down and that will focus on closer 
and then you can just see the details of the stem just a little bit easier. This is Creeping Buttercup and it has another nice yellow flower at the top with a ridge stem just underneath the flower and uh, that what makes it different from the Meadow Buttercup. And it has what we call runners, which are these little bits of root here. They're actually an overground root, but as you can see there's a clump here, a root, another clump here. So these runners can actually form new plants as they go along the ground. So that's Creeping Buttercup. Uh, this is an orchid that's gone into fruit. The, the petals have shriveled up and gone. You can see the brown remains. A common spotted orchid. And the leaves, you can see, are quite glaucous greeny blue colour with parallel veins going all the way up and transverse spots going across the leaf. In fact, and all the leaves all the way up the stem. There's these dark, dark splodges going across the leaf. And the petals here are white with some nice sort of purple markings on but really you need to be going out in May time to find these in flower. There's also a leaflet by the Weald Meadow Initiative that's a very good start uh, to identify some of the common flowers that you'll see in your pastures in the high weald.